So let's get into some news. So, as you guys probably already know, the Strong Museum of Play uh, has a World Video Game Hall of Fame. I don't know if, the, if I don't know if that's common knowledge. Well, if you didn't know that, you know now. Strong Museum of Play actually has a World Hall of Fame for video games, and it uh, it started in 2015. Mm-hmm. Uh, today, they just uh, inducted a couple more games, and uh, I figured we'd uh, go ahead and tell you who was uh, in the who was nominated in the 2015 and 2016. So if you want to go ahead. Yeah, so for the very first year for 2015, uh, the games that made it in, a uh, bunch of classics, Pong, obviously, great one, Pac-Man and Tetris, and then some of the uh, ones that are still going strong today, Super Mario Bros, Doom, just a little, a little surprising. Yeah, no, I was surprised about that too. And World of Warcraft. <laughs> that that one's not surprising. Not surprising. Yeah. But it's funny that that's the one that that's the one that's looped in with all the old games. Yeah, the, for the first year, I wouldn't think that'd be like a nominee for like the first year. Yeah. Then uh, in 2016, you have uh, GTA 3, good old Legend of Zelda. What's that? Uh, <laughs> I think I think it's uh, Zelda's the one with the green. Where the green? You you swing the sword around. We got right. the shield. All right, we're going to make people mad. Just... <laughs> Just... <laughs> um, the Oregon Trail. Oh, man. Yeah, remember, Oregon you Trail. Remember playing that back in the day? No. No. <laughs> no, <not at> <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> um, the Sims, which the Sims have been around for a super long time. I remember playing Sims back when, back on the computer when they first came out. Yeah, I've never been a big yeah. Sims fan, but... Can uh, can recognize it. Yeah. <laughs> then you have uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. You gotta go fast. Real fast. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Space Invaders. GTA Three. That's. I know that that was the big jump, the transition from mm-hmm. you know the like the top down into like the you know the three D model world. 3D, yeah. But I don't know. I never. I can never really get into three. I think it was because mm-hmm. when I got three, I got it in a double pack with three in Vice City. Oh, and Vice City was just such an improvement. From, I, yeah, yeah, I love Vice City. I played that game for way too much. Yeah, they probably just put in. Them. They probably put in three just because it was such a monumental step in the whole game series, and look what it is now. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And then finally for this year, uh, got some good ones. We had Donkey Kong. Good old Danky King. Danky King. Uh, Halo Combat Evolved. Halo. I love it. Uh, yeah, that's a good choice. Pokemon Red and Green. Should have been there in the earlier years, because fantastic games. Yeah. Does Blue get recognized ever? Or no, because it wasn't the original version. <laughs> I think because it wasn't the original version. Even when they did the remakes uh, over here, they did uh, Fire Red and Leaf Green. And yeah. Like, and I like Ocean Blue. I or... like Leaf Green. Leaf Green was good. Yeah. Uh, and then Street Fighter 2. Two. Yeah. Street Fighter 2. Not the original. Street Fighter 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty solid list. Oh, yeah, no, it's a, it's a great list. Uh, um, I know, uh, it went up with, uh, a couple of big games. The one that really stuck out was, uh, Final Fantasy 7, which is, you, you, you'll get your, you'll get your shot in another year, I'm yeah, sure. it'll get nominated every year until it makes it in there. Yep. <laughs> Which will probably be in the next year or two. Mm-hmm. It seems like they're starting to get more and more recent. Start like as as they get, the years go on, they're getting more recent. So yeah, I'm sure it'll be soon. Yeah, just like when when I first heard of the the uh, the World Video Game Hall of Fame, I thought they would just go straight for the classics first, but they keep they sprinkled in some like. Some a lot of newer stuff within the past like 10, 20 years. Yeah, I wonder who votes on it because I'm sure that's what it just goes to a committee for to, for them to vote on. Yeah, that is that's a good question. Have you uh, have you been to uh, Strong Museum? I have within the last few years. Uh, I think it's been probably like five years since I've been. Okay. Yeah, I mean, did they have the full video game exhibit upstairs when you went? Uh, they had the arcade. Yeah, they have at least when I yeah the arcade and then. They keep adding to it, I believe, but they mm-hmm. within the arcade they around, or around it they have like the full display of like the timeline of gaming and everything like that, and 
it's got tons of stuff on display like old like super rare stuff it's it's really yeah. cool i'll have to go i'll have to go again because i i really don't remember much about it at yeah. all all right so mario rabbits rpg <laughs> oh yeah what do you think of that <laughs> It's hard for me to comment on just because I, I've never played any of the Rabbids games. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I a Mario RPG in general sounds cool. Like, yeah. I'm about that. A lot of people love the original Mario RPG. Yeah, what was that so, on? Uh, I think that was on Nintendo. Like NES? Yeah, NES. It's either NES or SNES. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. Uh I never really played the Rabbids. I remember always seeing the commercials on uh, TV when, when they came out with the Wii one. Super obnoxious. Yeah, where the Rabbids were just, you had the uh, shake the Wii controller above your head and get the soda to go down. Yeah. It was like, oh my god, this, <laughs> this looks terrible. So why not why not make a Mario uh, Mario crossover? It's funny though. If someone if someone told me like, oh, they're they're making a Mario and Rabbids game, I would not expect it to be an RPG. <laughs> yeah, I, I really. I really wonder what they're going to do with it. And it's going to be exclusively on the Switch, obviously. Yeah. I would expect, like, some stupid party game or something that Nintendo is known for. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That that one just doesn't that one just doesn't rub me right. And it's coming out relatively soon. It's within... Uh, it's in fall. Supposedly. Yeah, supposedly. <laughs> so, yeah, it did get confirmed, but, yeah, no details. So. Yeah, none I guess I guess we'll see... Uh, maybe, maybe if they end up doing whatever their Nintendo Direct around E3, mm-hmm. you know, I figured that they had kind of, just cause when they, when they did their announcement, they talked about all these games that were coming out in 2018 and 2019. And mm-hmm. I'm like, they really don't have anything else this year, yeah. but maybe they do. And they are just holding off <laughs> and they're holding off to show us Mario cross rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. That, that's a system seller right I would there. just be surprised if they put that out this this year with the uh, Mario Odyssey also. Like, it's just, mm-hmm. I don't know, that would just kind of surprise me. But yeah. I guess we'll see. Yep, we'll have to see. Uh, so there was a, a, a video posted online uh, of Scorpio dev kit, uh, which kind of, it's interesting. It's an interesting look. It, it's it's very interesting um definitely nothing in that video is final uh and it the box itself looks just like the the new uh, xbox one s mm-hmm. different a little bit different button placements and then they had this fancy little screen at the bottom right corner yeah and uh, on that screen it displays your uh frames per second that's running yeah and the video showed constant 60. That's got to be good, right? <laughs> it, it, yeah, it has to be good. But, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of speculation. It, it, people, obviously, like, design's not final, but it, it does look like a, a working console or some, you know, that some idea of that's what it may look like. Mm-hmm. But people were arguing whether they thought that the, the actual screen would be on there that displays the frames per second. And, and I personally think that, that's just kind of a waste of money to put that on there. No, I agree. Uh, it would make it would make more sense if they just built in that uh, that meter in like the UI, just so like you just uh, you click in the settings, you can see what how many frames you're uh, getting instead of looking wherever you place the Xbox, looking down to see is like okay, yeah, I'm getting sixty, cool. Yeah, I mean, I feel like this con this console is going to be expensive enough that them putting that in there. They're either going to be losing more money on it, or they're going to have to raise the price on it, which is not good either way. Yeah, it it's definitely something that's not needed for sure. Yeah, but uh, it was interesting to at least take a look at you know what they're what the developers are getting and mm-hmm. kind of get an idea. But in uh, just over a month here, we'll probably uh, know for sure what yeah. we're going to be getting with it. So. Hopefully, uh, E three they show the design, they sh- they tell you the price, and it's nothing horrible. <laughs> Three hundred dollars. <laughs> Yeah, if only. <laughs> yeah, if only. It's like Xbox is paying you to get the new Xbox Scorpio. <laughs> give us your original Xbox One, and we'll give you this for free. <laughs> <laughs> is that how it works? <laughs> same for same trade in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Um, have you seen anything about uh, this new Call of Duty that's coming out? The yeah. the new old Call of Duty. The new. 
The Call of Duty 2 World War 2 remake of 2. <laughs> no. the, the Call of Duty WW1II. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, they're uh they're going back, rewinding the clock, going back to World War 2. The I did watch the trailer. Mhm. Looked like World War 2. Lots of explosions, lots of people yelling at you to go over there and kill some people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh it's your good old Call of Duty. Yeah, I mean I I've never been a huge fan of the Call of Duty franchise. I mean, mm-hmm. I've I've played, you know, games here and there, 2 and 3, Skip 4, everyone yells at me for doing that, yeah. but I played four, Modern Warfare 4 actually was pretty good. Yeah, I played Modern Warfare <laughs> 2, which was also good. I like that. Mm-hmm. And you know, the last one I played was Black Ops 3 just because my brother made me buy it to play multiplayer with him. I, I always found that the Black Ops had the best modes in it, just because uh, I believe Black Ops is the one that had zombies in it as well. Yeah, I think the original Call of Duty, they had zombies as World at War, mm-hmm. which was Treyarch, who then made all the Black Ops after that. Yeah. So the the off, the off years with the uh, Infinity War didn't get zombies for a couple years. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so the... From what they know so far, there's going to be zombies in this one. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different. You know, they're, uh, it's going to be Nazi zombies again. Yeah. Um, but there's supposed to actually be, like, a story mode with it built in, which is kind of cool. That's cool. Yeah, it's something different. So I think that'll that'll make that a little bit more interesting. I've never been a big fan of that. Just horde waves of enemies coming at you. But... It's something that sells the game. You know, a lot of people love it. So mm-hmm. adding adding to that, I think, can be nothing but good unless they somehow really <laughs> mess it up and make it the worst story ever. But yeah, I, I don't I don't know. It's just like how many how many times can you go back and re- revisit the same war over and over again? Yeah, it hasn't been done in a while. So mm-hmm. or at least by a good game or yeah. a big game. So it'll be interesting to try to compare this game to. You know the, you know Call of Duty two, Call of Duty three, uh, or the older Medal of Honors, and just kind of yeah. see how far they've come with the graphics and you know how they're going to approach it differently. Because I'm sure you're still going to get the the big battles, you know the D Day, Storming Normandy, all that. Yeah. But it'll be interesting. Like uh, I'm I'm excited to see what they do. I wouldn't be surprised if they take a little bit different direction in some of those older games i'm not sure what that direction is going to be mm-hmm. whether it be a lot grittier or you know something but I, if they just make it like the old call of duty but with better graphics i think people are going to have bad reactions to it yeah no i can i can definitely see that just like i know i used to like playing call of duty a lot but nowadays it just seems like it's just going down like it this the franchise itself is just not as strong as it used to be because they release a game year after year every year with just like these minor uh these minor adjustments to gameplay i'm still waiting for them to just start putting a number after it like the sports games <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah they're gonna call, run out of call of duty 18 yeah <laughs> call of duty 19 they might as well yeah but and then there's multiplayer which is obviously the selling point to the series uh and that drives units you've made it so that the last three or four call of duties are all crazy jetpacking jumping around shooting and now you're going to go back to world war ii and you know it's Mm -hmm. it's going to be a big step backwards not in the sense that you know it's worse but it's just you know you're taking all these different elements away that people have gotten used to i'm not saying that everyone likes them but Mm -hmm. they were there so now you're gonna have to you know you're gonna have to really do a good job of multiplayer uh, to make sure people stay interested. In- yeah, just because, yeah, like you are saying, like everyone's used to those new mechanics uh, with like, and, and just like different physics too. Yeah. With all those, uh, with all like the new weapons. And then you're going back to slow moving, slow aiming, slow loading weapons. I don't know. Uh, I hope it does well. It's, it's been, it's been a, sh- it's been a good franchise for a while, but. Yeah. And I mean, when, when was the last time they had a Call of Duty that was like more that era? It was world at war i think which was that was supposed to be like i think what korea and vietnam like type yeah times yeah which that i mean it'll play similar to that like you know mm-hmm. i imagine like with how the weapons are and stuff it's not like a modern or futuristic so and i remember that game 
did not get good reviews besides the zombies. Like that was that, the only that's thing. That, yeah, that's what that was the only thing that kept the kept that game going was the zombie mode. Everyone yeah. everyone I knew who bought World at War told me it was like, oh, you'll love it. It's it's you get it for the zombie mode. I was like, I'm not paying sixty dollars for the zombie mode game. Yeah. But, so now we're going we're going back to the last time they did a good job was with a World War Two or older war game was Call of Duty Three, mm-hmm. which is good. I liked Call of Duty Three. Yeah, but maybe I, uh, maybe they saw how uh, how Battlefield One did going back going back to that war. I heard it just... didn't do good though. I heard the opposite. I, mean, well, I, heard, I, mean, I heard people I... loved it. I guess it's a mixed bag. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I think it sold pretty well, but mm-hmm. I'm I've had I've heard a lot of people that did not like it. So. I don't know. I, think, I feel like it died off pretty quickly. Like, I don't see people on my friends list playing Battlefield mm-hmm. 1. <laughs> so, I don't know. Yeah. All right. So, also today, Darksiders 3. Yeah, they announced Darksiders 3, which was cool. Um, I know that a couple weeks ago they had posted some sort of, like, Darksiders, like, teaser or something up on either, like, Twitter or uh, or their website, which kind of hinted that they were doing something with the series. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I don't think anyone necessarily expected it to be a third one because the first two, although like across the board got great reviews and you know did really well in that sense, mm-hmm. it didn't sell very many copies. It's it seems like a very like niche game. Like uh, people who play it and know it. We'll probably get the third one, but it doesn't. It doesn't seem like it has that appeal, like to a lot of the, to the mass market. Yeah, I, I think it'll be hard, uh, especially if it's like coming out s- similar to around the time that like the new God of War is coming out, or you know, games that are similar to it. They're gonna go to those bigger AAA titles that they have played in the past and know, and they're just mm-hmm. gonna think that this is some sort of like, you know, like oh, this is the this is a rip off, which is not the case. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I played a little bit of the first Darksiders, and you know, I've I've heard a lot of different uh, reviews and people talk about the second one, and it seems like it's a lot closer to Zelda, mm-hmm. or, and, or these like, actually, pretty much exactly like Zelda from what I've, I've heard that from tons of people. Yeah, that's that's what I that's what I hear. I never played the series, so I wouldn't I wouldn't have too much of a perspective on it. Yeah, and I remember the first time there's someone like it's like Zelda. I'm like, uh, it's not like Zelda. But mm-hmm. then like you hear it from like 15 other people, and like, oh, maybe this is actually Zelda. So yeah. I didn't really play enough of it to really find out myself. And uh, I'd love to go back because I know like right now uh, on at least on Xbox. Oh yeah, there's they, that sale. Yeah, they have a sale where you get the uh, the War Mastered Edition of the first one and the Death Definitive Edition yeah, of the, the second one. Death Definitive. Yeah. So for 20 bucks, you get both of them. It's not bad. No, not yeah. at all. Especially with people, some of these developers who are remastering their games uh, and then selling them for forty or fifty, sometimes sixty, full price mm-hmm. dollars. It's... I think I think they knew that they wouldn't get away with that. Even yeah. uh, even with it on sale, I think it's only like thirty nine ninety nine for both of them. Yeah, without it being on sale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they definitely wouldn't get away with that. Not with how little uh, sales they made. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I mean if if you guys like games that are a mixture of God of War and Zelda, that sounds interesting to you, then you know, check it out. 20 bucks isn't uh, a bad investment to make to at least try them out and uh, see if it's something you like. The the third one looks like it's going to follow uh, a new character, uh, a woman, Fury, mm-hmm. uh, this time. So the first one you play is War and the second one you play is Death. Um Okay. So the so it's a new character, it'll be a new move set. Um, it seems like the other two characters are going to be in this one, and that you might be either I couldn't really tell from the trailer either either fighting them or you know something along those lines. But mm-hmm. but yeah, it's it, it looks like a fun openish hack and slash, you know, treasure hunting. I heard that the second one had a pretty interesting crafting system. Hmm. Uh, so we'll see what kind of changes they make in you know where the game goes from here Mm -hmm. but uh i know a lot of people that played the other games uh are really excited about this release so yeah um i'm excited to see how it does that's for sure yeah all right so let's get to some dlc zelda breath of the wild dlc they uh they went into detail what was gonna come with it 
it's gonna be twenty dollars for the season pass. So one of the first one of the first things that stuck out to me was uh, Trial of the Sword. Um, basically, you uh, find a certain sacred location. And then you find a certain item, which is, spoiler alert, the Master Sword. And, Dang, spoiler. <laughs> and um, with this DLC, you go to this location, and there's 45 rooms. Uh, each room uh, has its own challenge. You start off with no no armor, no weapons. And uh, the, po- uh, the point of it is... Uh, you, if you clear all 45 rooms, you, your Master Sword stays uh, in its powered-up state, which uh, regularly... For the rest of the game? For the rest of the game, yeah. It doesn't break? It doesn't break. So the Master Sword, it, it has uh, 30 attack. And um, whenever you fight anything uh, anything like related to like Ganon, like Ganon Blight or whatever, it starts to glow, and it doubles in attack. So it's like a strength... Yeah, so it yeah. gets a it gets a it gets a buff for the whole game. So whenever uh, whenever you're not fight if you're just fighting regular enemies, it'll always be glowing. Yeah, which is cool, and it gets it gets people who like myself who already beat the game to to jump back in, play it play it again. Yeah, it sounds like that's probably gonna be something that you're gonna be sitting there for a few hours trying to clear that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, they also come with a hard mode. Is that like? Did they say if that like is a new game plus type thing, or do they not say? Um, in hard mode, enemies gradually regain health, so they take out. Uh, so take them out as quickly as possible. All enemies are also powered up by one level, which I didn't know they had levels. Which it makes sense. But um, so it's probably just you're gonna have to start a new game, and it's just gonna be harder. Yeah, you're it's just gonna, gonna be harder. You're not gonna carry anything over. Yeah. Okay. And then there's enemies and treasures in the sky. Which is which is strange. Can you fly? Huh? Can you fly uh, in the game? Uh, Spoiler. Okay. You, you can't fly. Okay. Uh, I'll I'll go ahead and say that, but uh, you can you can get up high in the sky if you need to. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's also uh, something called the travel medallion. Somewhere in the world, there's a chest with a travel medallion inside. You register it to that location, and then you can just teleport there. Wait, was there not any teleporting before in this game? There's certain areas you can unlock that lets you teleport to them, yeah. but there's not many. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then they also bring back some masks, so you get the Majora's Mask. This is the most exciting part of the DLC, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Midna's Mask, or Midna's Helmet, sorry. Uh, Phantom Armor. From uh, Phantom uh, Hour- yep. Hourglass, yep, which, is, which looks really cool, and then uh, Tingle's outfit, <laughs> which I, I am very excited for because it looks hilarious. That's awful. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you're talking about. <laughs> and then there's also the Cork Mask, which uh, what the Cork Mask does uh, when you put it on, when you get close to a Cork, since there's 900 of them in the game, uh, it starts to vibrate. Yeah. And then so it helps, helps you find collectibles. them. Yeah. Okay. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's cool that they actually do something and some of them do something and not just look cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but for twenty dollars, I guess it's not it's not bad. No, twenty dollars mm-hmm. isn't that bad. I would expect it to be more. I think I remember when the game came out, they were asking, they you were able to buy the season pass, but mm-hmm. no one really knew what you were getting. But it was only twenty bucks. Yeah, no, it was like it was like a rumor. It was like. From what I heard when I first bought the game, I just heard it's like, oh, it comes with a hard mode and it comes with some items. I was like, ooh. Yeah. Like, I was like, is that what you're going to try to rope me in with? Yeah. And then uh, I'm already a hard sell for DLC as it is, so I don't know. I might I might pick it up just because I want to try doing that uh, the 45 uh, room challenge mode yeah. just to get that powered up sword. That'd be cool. All right, and then there's also... Fire Emblem Echoes DLC just got announced. So Fire Emblem Echoes is the new installment for Fire Emblem. Uh, it's going to be on the 3DS. It's going to come out your Oh, normal... this is the new one? Yep, this is the new one. For some reason, I thought this was for like the, the dual ones that came out. Oh, like... no, that's Fates. Okay. And came out with three. There was three? Yeah. So there was uh, Birthright, Conquest, and uh, F- Fates, I believe. Fates, Fates? No. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't remember, uh, I can't remember what that third one was. That's all right. This is embarrassing. That's all right. Yeah. 
Let's see. I thought it was just the the two that you said. I didn't even know there was a third one. Revelations. That, yeah. They weren't. Were they all physical copies, or was one of them only digital? One of them was only digital. Okay, that's why. Yeah. I didn't if you <laughs> if you were lucky enough to get the double pack, uh, you it comes with a third. You can download the third one to that one for free. Yeah. No. Um, I can't remember if it was for free or if you paid like less. Okay. Yeah. So this is the new one that's coming out on the 3DS. Yep, it's coming out on the 3DS, and uh, it's gonna be 39.99 like most new uh, 3DS games. But uh, they already announced the DLC for it, which in total for the season pass is 44.99. So that's five dollars more, more than the game than the game is, which is outrageous. <laughs> like uh, I have a list right here. Like you get there's five. There's five DLC packs, which they come with. Um, they come with new maps. They come with new dungeons. Uh, more characters, more challenges. But totaling over forty dollars for the season pass. If you don't buy the season pass, if you like go down the list and add them all together, you're over fifty dollars, which is just like uh, uh, Fire Emblem's Awakening for yeah. the 3DS. Which is still that's that's kind of crazy. You're basically paying. In D- like for DLC for a brand new the price of a brand new game for the 3DS. Yeah, that's a tough sell. Uh, it doesn't really make sense to me at all. Mm-hmm. If you're gonna, if it's really that much content that it's worth that much money, mm-hmm. you could just make do another, another game. game. Yeah. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I love the Fire Emblem series. Fire Emblem Awakening is uh, debatably one of my more favorite Fire Emblem games, and I did. I did purchase one or two of the packs, and they do give you a lot of uh, like a lot of context into the game and the characters. But I don't know. I don't know about this season pass. That's just way too much. Because I believe uh, for Fates, the season pass for that was only twenty twenty five dollars. It came with it came with less than what this one does, but still. Yeah. Yeah, but then again, that game was broken up into three different games. Yeah, that's true. Could you uh could you play this new uh this new uh Fire Emblem Echoes on your new 2DS XL? Oh yeah, the 2DS XL. My god. <laughs> you know, if I knew they were coming out with the 2DS XL, I would have not bought a 3DS XL just because I never play in 3D. The only reason why I bought the 3DS XL I have now is cuz I bought the limited edition Fire Emblem version. Yeah. But uh the 2DS XL looks actually really good. Yeah, yeah. super sleek. Mm-hmm. It, it looks nice. It's clamshell like the 3DS, not like the original 2DS. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I it's going to be $150. So it's you know $50 less than you're going to get the new 3DS XL for. And realistically, $50 for 3D, like... I think it's done. Like no one's gonna buy that. Yeah. Because you're supposed to. There, the the 2DS XL is gonna have like the updated processor that mm-hmm. the 3DS has. So, so it can it can run the same games as it as the other one can. And a lot of games that come out now don't even support 3D. Like they have like minimal 3D. Like when Pokemon came out, you can barely tell it was in 3D. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Like a lot of games don't need it. I think they know it was a gimmick and it it did them well for a while. But yeah, I think. I think this is the way to go. Just get rid- stop doing 3D for a while. Yeah, yeah, it'll it'll do well. And you know, I've been kind of wondering why I've been seeing such a small amount of trickling in of 3DSs into stores. Mm-hmm. And you know, maybe this was the reason why. And maybe this is costing them less to you know make them. And, mm-hmm. You know, I don't know how much more they were paying just to get this 3D technology to work. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a great idea. Is a smart move on Nintendo. Um, kind of stomps on the idea a little bit of the Switch taking over and them stopping the 3DS. But yeah, that, mean, that's the thing. If uh, I felt like they should have doubled down on the Switch, uh, really pushed for it to be Nintendo's all-in-one console. Like it's your portable. It's also your uh, your uh, household console. Yeah, I think that would have been a better marketing strategy. Not that it's it's a bad thing because uh, 3ds still makes their sales. They're they're still selling, they're selling units. They're selling games. Um, it's not dying down uh, anytime soon unless they unless they really try to push the switch 